Welcome to another video from Lockdown Electronics with me Bill and with the series on oscillators coming to a finish just an episode or two left to go uh, it's time to start a new series and this time the topic is going to be filters now it's something which uh, occurs a lot in electronics uh, so I'm expecting the series to run to at least three parts maybe more we'll just see how I get on um, and in this first uh, edition we're going to look at uh, first order filters they're going to be active filters so we're going to be making use of op amps and i'm going to also in this uh, first edition show you some ways to actually take some measurements of filters that don't need lots of fancy test equipment um, nice if you've got the fancy test equipment but if you haven't um, you can still uh, enjoy learning about electronics and that's really uh, what uh, certainly this uh, edition is about it's about uh, maybe actually getting some of the bits here and building uh, these kind of things and uh, exploring yourself and seeing uh, seeing what you can learn so let's start with a bit of theory and then we'll look at some uh, first order filters okay I'm going to start by just uh, quickly mentioning the op amp that I'm going to make use of during this series it's the Texas Instruments TL072 um, cheap and cheerful op amp in reality you could use pretty much anything for these circuits um, in the past maybe a 741 that's a bit of a, a heritage component now but uh, <laughs> pretty famous nonetheless so the internals of the TL072 uh, then um, just a fairly straightforward op amp circuit however the important point to note is that both the uh, positive and negative inputs on the left hand side there both feed into um, FETs which means the op amp has a very high input impedance which is rather handy because it means it'll have very little impact on uh, any circuitry that uh, occurs before it uh, which uh, means theoretically um, that's uh, that's more useful it's probably well beyond the scope of my simple filter series but uh, just worth noting this is a, an FET input op amp um, I'm using the 8 pin dill version you can see it here and I'll be using uh, the dual op amp version which this is so there are two op amps that are independent of each other and um, I'm going to make good use of that uh, on this first uh, first particular video because we'll uh, we'll have two filters uh, set up on the same piece of breadboard okay so let's start by having a look at the first two filter circuits then these are first order active filters uh, and the order bit the first order simply means there's one um, if you like set of circuitry to do the filtering so they're the uh, the simplest version so we've got low pass on the left high pass on the right and you can hopefully see the only difference between those two circuits is the positioning of the uh, resistor and the capacitor on the input um, that's uh, that's the bit that actually does the filtering the op amp itself um, is designed to uh, uh, sort out the fact that putting a filter in circuit uh, creates loss and that actually op amp tries to do something about that now I'm going to be using uh, plus and minus supply rails here which allows the output to also swing positive and negative um, and I won't uh, uh, complicate the circuit diagram by showing you that other than just uh, just accept that it's there and as I say the bits that uh, actually do the filtering are just on the input to calculate the cutoff frequency uh, it's simply the reciprocal of 2 pi times the resistance and the capacitance remember always to work in ohms and farads and uh, that gives a result for the 15k and a 10n capacitor of about just just over one kilohertz roughly obviously that doesn't allow for any tolerances in the components and the fact that these things are just built on a breadboard so the filter area yeah as I've said are just the two bits on the input and um, all the rest is to do with uh, sorting out the signal level okay on the breadboard then um, yeah incredibly straightforward low pass at the top high pass at the bottom and just a reminder the two op amps look like that on the circuit board um, and there's not much more to it so let's um, let's now have a think about how we're going to measure what's going on here and I did say in the intro that uh, we don't need to have lots of fancy test equipment and that's true so the device under test which in this case is the filter so we're going to feed it with a signal source now for this demo here I'm just going to use a Untec uh, signal generator 
um, there are other options and then we're going to just measure the output on a voltmeter set to AC I'm going to use a Zoe um, voltmeter uh, set to AC and we'll just uh, see what happens there so let's go to the bench and have a look at uh, how we do that okay here on the left top left hand side of the breadboard is the uh, hop amp with its two filters that's the low pass that's the high pass current and I'm connected to the, uh, the low pass so I've got signal generator feeding the input here via this orange wire and I've simply got the output connected to this AC voltmeter and you can see uh, 1.7 volts there and I'm currently feeding it with 100 hertz so let's now start increasing the frequency that's 200, 300, 400, 500 and you can see the output signal changing 600, 700, 800, 900, 1 kilohertz so 1.06 volts there and then we go up to that's 1. Point, that's 1.5 kilohertz and you can see we're at 0.83 volts now so in other words the low pass filter is um, doing its job so what we could do here we could simply just make a note of these readings that's 100 Hz 200 300 400 um, allow us to produce a graph so here's an example I did uh, earlier and you can hopefully see the shape of the uh, the filter on the graph there so I think the point I'm trying to make here is you don't need fancy kit um, to check out the performance of a filter certainly not at this kind of frequency range um, and I hope that's maybe going to encourage some of you to have a go at this kind of circuit because having a go and getting involved and actually trying it yourself is a really great way to learn. OK, so those measurements were taken just using a voltmeter set on AC and if you uh, want to do that kind of thing you don't even need the fancy signal generator because there are um, several multimeters now that you can get that have got a signal source built into them so with a bit of creativity you could generate the signal on the multimeter and take the measurements at the same time uh, the gotcha fix one that I've done a review on recently does that uh, as do the um, the Zoitec ones so there's it doesn't have to be uh, an expensive business to, to do this kind of thing um, however uh, we're probably more used to seeing filters displayed uh, using slightly more sophisticated gear so let's now have a look at how we do that earlier we looked at this little diagram the signal source the device under test and, and a voltmeter now I'm lucky in the sense that uh, I have a, a signalant uh, signal generator that looks something like this and also a signalant oscilloscope um, now uh, any signal generator and oscilloscope will work here but what's handy for these two and one of the reasons I got the signal generator is that it's possible to connect the oscilloscope to the signal generator via USB and then we can instruct the oscilloscope if we put it into to Bode plot mode which uh, allows the signal sorry the oscilloscope to take control of the signal generator and to produce a set of frequencies and take measurements while it does it and then rather handily it'll pl plot both the um, amplitude and the phase uh, on a graph and then it'll look hopefully something like that so let's um, let's have a look at uh, the output from the scope there isn't much to see on the circuit board it just looks the same as uh, it does all the time with the electronics is all going on inside obviously but let's just look at the uh, scope and uh, see what the display looks like Here's the scope display with the uh, plot running and the important thing to note is that as the scope sends information to the signal generator it's got no idea uh, what magnitude of the output's going to be um, so the scale will change. I'm going to speed this up, it's not the most exciting video, this is just over three times the speed you would have to sit and watch if you're doing this on the bench but you can see the uh, scales are changing as the scope deals with the different um, uh, magnitude of uh, output that it's seen but there's the plot of the low pass filter hopefully looking reasonably okay I've left phase on there onto the high pass then and this time uh, just to show you you can do it I've changed the uh, frequency display to um, logarithmic um, but that doesn't affect uh, the output 
um, measurement levels they're still uh, uh, the same as before linear uh, decibels are on the left uh, and uh, we won't worry too much about the phase but there's the completion and then finally we can actually remove uh, the phase plot if we just want to look at the amplitude so we'll just move the phase plot out the way and that's the filter now if you've um, got the particular bits of signaling kit which I mentioned or some other kit that's uh, capable of the same kind of thing then uh, yeah make use of it uh, if you haven't it's still possible to look graphically at um, the output of filters so let's have a look how we can do that now um, using some less sophisticated and cheaper equipment Okay, finally a third method. Um, I finally relented and stopped calling it a voltmeter and started call it, calling it an oscilloscope. Um, so for this method we're going to use, uh, going to go back to the Young Tech signal generator and I'm going to set it up uh, with a sweep. Um, so the display looks a little bit like that. So it's sweeping from 100 Hz to, uh, in this case, uh, 10 kHz. Uh, and it's going to take 2 seconds to do that. Um, and it's just increasing uh, in a linear fashion. Now this is not synchroed with the scope um, so the display is going to drift about a bit but if you then uh, adjust the time base on the scope it's possible to view filters um, and to view the output um, and effectively what we've got here it's showing you the um, uh, amount of energy coming out for a particular frequency so uh, if we then um, change the time base a little bit more we get a display that looks a bit like that and you can see we've got low pass filter at the top high pass filter at the bottom so okay we can't take any um, complicated measurements maybe but we can see that uh, the output of the signal is changing uh, as the signal frequency changes as it passes through the filter so let's just have a look at a little bit of video that, uh, that shows you that in operation now the screen grabs that I showed you just now on the slides were taken from uh, uh, the Siglant scope but just wanted to show you that you don't have to have expensive gear to do this so here is the Zoe 703 handheld scope this is the two channel version but it would work the same with the one channel version so I've got a signal coming in uh, I'm just using the low pass filter here don't worry about the rest of the boards just the top half of that op amp and the signal is currently being swept from 100 hertz to 6 kilohertz and I've got a sweep time of one second at the moment and you can hopefully see on the time base here that we, we can actually see the shape of the uh, response uh, every time the um, sweep starts so to speak uh, from the signal generator we're obviously at the 100 hertz and when it finishes we're at 6 kilohertz uh, and if I just change that to two seconds, give it a chance to appear, you'll see we get a, a longer trace. Three seconds, that's going to pretty much completely fill the display. And then I'll go back to one second there. And if I drop down to, say, 0.8 seconds, we're going to get more sweeps uh, on the display. Um, so, yeah, you need to play about with this because it's not synchronised. Um, and you know, I did this to the intention of showing you this is not, um, you know, there are ways to synchronize it, and I've done videos on this in the past. But here, uh, hopefully, you're seeing we're able. I'm going to go back up to uh, one second for you there. You're hopefully able to see here that um, it's actually possible to uh, look at the um, response of a filter using this uh, relatively modest equipment. And if I now go back to the frequency and change the top of the sweep frequency down to say 3 kilohertz in fact we'll get yeah there's 3 kilohertz you can uh, yeah see the response um, showing up rather nicely there we just got a 2 kilohertz for you so you get the idea of uh, what's going on now obviously you can't take any measurements that's now 3 kilohertz again with a sweep time of 1 second um, if we go up now and change that to say two seconds we almost get a screen full per display when the when the sweep actually starts at the left hand side of the screen there you get a, 
a pretty good example. So yeah, you can do this with relatively modest equipment. It doesn't need all the clever stuff. What you can't do is um, look uh, where the 3dB down point is and things like that. But uh, and maybe, uh, maybe this is sufficient for you to be able to see that, yeah, what you've made actually works. Um, and uh, I think that's, uh, that's quite handy. OK, well that's our first look at filters and hopefully it's made some sense and I really would encourage you to, um, you know, to get involved. Uh, the cost of components for things like this is tiny. Uh, you don't even need a proper power supply, you could just use a couple of batteries and that would be more than capable of allowing you to, to build some of these circuits and, and learn along the way and you might just find uh, you enjoy it. Thanks very much for watching and uh, see you on the next video and as I say more uh, more series uh, editions yet to come.